Hey, he fell for it. He fell for it. Oh, that was lovely. Lovely stuff. All right, it's episode four of the rapid rating climb series where I literally am just trying to get as high of a rapid rating as I can because my chess.com rapid rating is 1765 and my classical ELO is about 1950, 1960, like over the board. So realistically, my online rapid should be around 2000 at least. So that's what we're doing. I'm just playing live talking you through it as I play. It's 10 minutes plus zero second increment. I'm going to have a good time because I enjoy making these videos. And aside from the fact that they're quite easy to make and we have a Caro. Uh, I know many of you enjoy the Caro Khan as those are some of my most watched videos. And we go for the immediate C5 attacking white center. I'm going to go knight C6 to apply even more pressure. And if they take, they temporarily will go up a pawn. But it's not really any concern because we're probably we will be winning one of them back at least. Bishop e3, I believe, is a good move. I'm thinking about Queen b6 targeting b2 because the bishop stepped off of the defense. But I think something like Queen D2 just solves those problems quite easily. Now, I am kind of was hoping for Knight F3 so I could get my Bishop out. But no such luck. Now, I know Knight H6 might be a move. E6 might be a move. We could probably take. In fact, I'm going to take. I'm going to take. Just keep it simple. And okay, we have e6. It blocks the bishop in, yes. We could go bishop f5, but I prefer e6 straight away because I'm not too worried about my light squared bishop right now. I kind of just want to get safe and castled first. And then we can Fianchetto maybe. Um, yeah, now my opponent goes knight f3, so I can't pin him. Queen b6 is a move. In fact, I don't see a reason not to play it. Just attacking the pawn on b2. Opponent defends. Now, bishop b4 doesn't really work because of knight c3. So I don't think anything comes of that. My instinct is telling me knight e7, knight f5 to attack the bishop and put pressure on the pawn. Looks logical. If the knight goes to c3, our queen should be fine. Knight a4 isn't really concerning. We can always offer a trade of queens. So I think knight e7, knight f5 looks very good. Now, if you're enjoying the video, I would recommend you watch the previous episodes, which are linked in a playlist of, I, I think there's, well, there is three more episodes before this of just, you know, the rapid rating climb, just increasing the rapid rating, and you'll get notified when I drop new episodes if you subscribe. So shameless plug out of the way. Knight f5, I think makes sense. I think it does. I don't see a reason not to play it. Open up the bishop. Given the opportunity, we could take. Yo, future me here, just to let you know, my opponent actually abandons this game, like, for no reason, and he waits about three minutes to do so. So if you want to skip to the second game, because we played two games in this video because my opponent abandons, then the timestamp will be in the description, so you can just click on that, skip to the next game. But during the time I'm waiting, I didn't actually know he was going to abandon. So I did talk about some interesting stuff during that time. So if you want to listen to that, please do. If you don't and you just want to see some chess, then go to the description, click, click the timestamp, and head on over to the second game. I hope you enjoyed the video. Our opponent wouldn't be able to take with the queen because b2 would hang. He'd have to play f takes. But if he goes f takes, then e4 is on the cards for him. And kingside castling will 
open up the F file. So I don't think we really want to take, especially because his bishop is basically just a big pawn. Like, it's, it's you could replace it with a pawn and it would be doing basically the same job. So I think our knight is far better than this bishop, even though, you know, most of the time you want to have the bishop pair if you can get it. Here, I don't see the point. I don't think it benefits us, especially because we spent two moves developing our knight from e7 to f5. And then if we take, that's a third move. And we've essentially lost a tempo, because our opponent only used one move to develop. So, okay. Let's not rush. We can always just play something like bishop e7 or bishop b4 in castle. Something I will say that's quite instructive is... Um, in the past, when I was lower rated, I'd have a bit of a phobia of going bishop e7 or bishop e2 as white. Because I thought it wasn't very active and my bishop wasn't doing anything. But as I've improved over the past year or so, I've started really enjoying having my bishop on a more quote-unquote passive square. Because, one, it serves a really good defensive purpose as the squares of g5 and h4 are often used for attacking purposes, and so it's good to have a defender with those squares. And also, developing the bishop to a square like b4 can often leave it vulnerable, you know, to moves like uh, a3, and then I end up having to retreat anyway, and white just gets more space, and maybe he gets to play a move like b4, taking space to set up an idea of, like, knight a4, knight c5 but gaining a tempo on my bishop in the process of doing that so developing your bishop to a more like stereotypically active square isn't always the best of ideas because chess isn't just about accomplishing your own goals it's also about stopping your opponent from accomplishing their goals right it's a mix of the two things so something worth bearing in mind because I mean, I only really have considered that concept seriously quite like relatively recently. So I've been playing chess for a long time. Not seriously for a long time, but for a long time. I'm 20 now, and um, I learned chess when I was like three, maybe four, my dad taught me. And I mean, my dad isn't a good chess player. He just knows how, he just knows how the pieces move and everything. And I never really took the game seriously until I was like 14, went to a few tournaments, did well, but it stressed me out, so I stopped. And then in the past couple years, I've started playing competitively in a league format, and it's been really fun. I've been really enjoying it. I have no idea, because cause I'm at university now, i have in like a city most of the time, so there is actually a chess league. I come from like the countryside, so th there's no chess clubs. Um, I don't know why our opponent is taking so long here. I really hope he hasn't abandoned or something. I mean, his connection looks fine, but he's spent like four minutes on this move. <laughs> It's given me a bit of a chance to monologue, though. I mean, hopefully some of what I've been saying has been making sense to fill the gap in time. The bishop... I, I don't really want to take it anyway. So I think maybe my opponent is thinking of ways to save the bishop from being taken. Maybe that's why he's taking so long? Oh. It looks like he might have abandoned... That's really annoying, because, well, I'm going to have to play another game, because I can't leave it on that. I think I'm going to leave the explanation in there, just the stuff I was talking about while we were waiting, but I'll have, like, a, just a disclaimer that he's going to abandon, so you can skip to this part of the video, if um, you don't want to listen to all that. But we gain the rating anyway, 
and we're going to search for a new game. This opponent rated 1838, so it's going to be a bit tougher, and hopefully he isn't going to abandon straight away. But we get a Vienna. I love the Vienna opening. And, you know, it's not a typical knight f3. And we get the Vienna Gambit with f4. The point is, if our opponent takes on f4, we play e5 attacking the knight. The knight has no forward movement. Oh my god. Because the queen covers g4 and h5, and the knight covers e4 and d5. So he has to retreat, and we win this pawn back eventually. It's like a better version of a king's gambit, because the queen can't get out, because the knight's blocking her. But here, this is the main line. You take on e5, knight takes e4. And here you can play a few moves. Knight f3 is common, but queen f3 is a bit more popular nowadays. You basically force this knight to make a decision because you're adding another attacker to it. Knight f3 doesn't really make the knight do anything. And if you take, then after pawn takes, your knight is going to be under attack. So it's just a bit of a different dynamic. Now the main moves here for black are knight c6, f5, and knight takes. Knight takes isn't necessarily the best. Now, I like to take with the B pawn. D takes is technically more accurate. Yes, but D takes is only more accurate if black goes for a specific line, which I will go over in the game analysis. But if your opponent plays a move like bishop B6, which looks very natural, then I think B takes is far better because you get this awesome pawn structure in the center. And you want to go bishop g3, knight d2, castle, get these pieces roaring down the kingside. Now here, queen g3 would be a nice move to attack g7, because if queen g3 castles bishop h6, the pawn is under attack, and it's pinned to the king, so after g6 you can take the rook. But queen g3, look out, blunders bishop to h4, which is a pin. And the bishop is protected by the queen. So, bishop d3. We're just setting up the cannons, right? We're getting the pieces ready to attack our opponent's king. And the knight often goes from e2 to f4 to put pressure. Oh my god. These arrows that put pressure on the bishop on e3. Sorry, I have no idea why my arrows are messing up so much. I'm just going to see if I can fix it. So, I don't know. Maybe that helped. I just did a little thing with the mouse. Okay. Queen d7 is rare. But this does allow queen g3, actually. Because now there is no bishop h4. Because the queen isn't defending the bishop. That actually looks quite nice, you know. And then after queen g3 we can maybe even go knight f3 to access the g5 square the queen is doing a good job of keeping an eye on d5 here but we do force a response from black so i'm going to play it i'm going to play it i just don't see queen d7 and i think the reason that it doesn't get played might be because of queen g3 because like i said the queen on d8 stops queen g3 because of bishop h4 and yeah we induce g6 which is a very weakening move for obvious reasons now i'd like to throw in rook b1 to discourage black from castling queen side but if i go bishop b1 that might encourage the move c5 which is a good move because it attacks our center and threatens c4 in some variations to trap our bishop if we play a move like knight to e2 blocking the retreat. So, I'm not going to go rook b1 because I don't want to encourage my opponent to play c5 because that would open up the queen's defense of b7. Instead, knight e2 again does look nice to go to f4 to attack this bishop. 
Hmm. But knight e2 does block the bishop's retreat if our opponent does go for this idea. Knight f3, however, blocks the rook. But if the knight's going to head to g5 anyway, then I prefer knight f3, I think. This might be a bit inaccurate, but I feel like a knight on e4 or f4 accomplished the same goal. Now... I'm glad I played knight f3 now because c4 is no longer a threat of trapping the bishop. So, let's castle. c4 is met with bishop e2, which looks a bit ugly, but... Okay, we could take with a knight, but I don't see the point. Let's just take back with the pawn. Secure the center. The bishop is now very happy. He gets to remain on d3 forever, protected by a pawn and protecting the pawn. You know, common setup with a bishop. Keeps it nice and happy. Knight d... sorry, c6. Maybe b4 to attack the bishop. Spends a lot of time, though, if he does that. Maybe this is a move. But like in the previous game, this bishop is kind of just a big pawn. So I don't really want to take it. Rook b1? To discourage our opponent from going queenside? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Now there is also bishop h6 stopping our opponent from castling, which looks nice. Now we have five minutes and there's no increment, so I'm actually just going to play it. I'm going to have to speed up a bit here. I spent way too long explaining things. Um, but I think this is quite... Oh. Okay, so he's looking at c4. That doesn't look right to me. Doesn't look right. Why? Why does that look incorrect? Um, I'm thinking of Rook B1, Knight C4, Knight G5. So knight c4, knight g5, the knight... Ah, but then knight d2, because the bishop no longer covers that square. Then takes. Takes, attacking the queen. Check. King moves. And then we take back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay, 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 okay. There there and if he takes the this back then we take the knight so knight d2 okay yeah this is fine and this is really good for us because our opponent loses control of the dart squares massively which is what he weakened by playing g6 i want to take with the bishop i think yeah i want to go to f6 maybe I don't really want to bring the queen to g5. I like keeping the queen on my third rank just to cover squares. Maybe I should have taken with the queen, but it's whatever. Now we always have bishop takes pawn takes c3 to shore up the center. But then we have opposite colored bishops, which could cause a drawish position. Whoa, b5. Okay. Okay. We could throw this in, which I'm going to do. This isn't a move because the rook is going to hang. I actually kind of want to come back. Keep an eye on d2, but we've forced the rook to move and he can't castle kingside anymore. This isn't easy to convert, but we clearly have a better position. Moves like a4 are on my radar. 
But even if he takes, I don't see what we're going to do. I'm going to take it. I know his point is to play this, but I don't believe he has anything. I don't believe he has an, has an attack, because we're also cutting off queenside castling. That's not a threat. Takes, takes. We can always go h4 as well. Which I quite like. Let's go h4. The king can't really do anything. If it goes something like this, we can always give a check. Ooh. Really? Really, really? Okay. What about this? Needs to play a little bit quicker here. Let's kick the rook. I'm going to go queen f3 to set up a battery, also to threaten this. Bishop. Bishop takes, pawn takes, queen a8. So he would have to take back with the b pawn. And then c3. Hey, he fell for it. He fell for it. Yes, queen f3 sets up a battery. But queen f3 also pins the pawn. And here, this is... We're forcing a trade of queens, actually. Because the king can't go to e7 because of the bishop. Oh, that was lovely. Lovely stuff. And that might be actually a really high accuracy game. I'm very happy with that. Obviously we're not going to go over the first game because our opponent abandoned it. But this one I was very happy with. So this is theory. And after Queen F3, like I said, the main moves are F5 to protect the knight with another pawn. So if knight takes... Then you can take back with the D pawn, and black is very happy. And if you take en passant, then the knight can retreat back to F6, and black is very happy. Because, you know, he's got some great development here. He can probably castle kingside, get the rook on the open F file. There's no reason to allow this as white. And the other move is knight C6. So if knight takes e4, then knight d4 attacks the queen, threatens knight c2, and after queen c3 defending c2 and attacking the knight, d takes e4 opens up defense on the knight with the queen. And black is very happy because I can't take back the pawn on e4 as intended. So knight takes c3 is the other move. b takes, and here I was expecting... Queen h4 check, g3, queen e4 check, forcing a trade of queens. I do have another game where a similar thing happened, except I already had a pawn on d4, and it was essentially completely winning. It was, I think, this position. Normally, black wouldn't allow this because he'd take on passant, because this pawn is very, very weak, and he wants to trade it off. But you can go check out that video if you're interested in it. But our opponent doesn't play the critical line, so I get d4. Here, queen h4 doesn't really work because, like I said, I have this pawn wedge and it's way too good for white. So, bishop e7, bishop d3, queen d7, and yes, I think I'm correct to say this allows queen g3. Inaccuracy. Also, the game review gave me 89% accuracy, which is not bad for a rapid game. G6. Knight F3. Yeah, that is better than Knight E2. Because it doesn't like Knight E2 because of C5. And you now have to take it because you can't allow C4. And because the Queen is on D7, Bishop B5, which is a common move to get the Bishop out of this trap, isn't playable. So I'm right to go knight f3. It preferred bishop h6 straight away, but I don't think it's a big deal. 
C5, castle. Wow, it really doesn't like this because of C4, bishop E2. And H6 or H5, stopping bishop H6. That's difficult to play. That's really difficult to play. So that's why it wanted instead of castles, bishop h6. So this, it believes, is better for white because you already have the bishop on h6 and black can't prevent it. Good to know. So bishop h6, if you get this kind of setup, is a move that you should play before you castle so you don't give black the opportunity to stop the bishop going there if he plays g6. I know it's kind of a niche detail, but I'm sure I'll get it in the future. And now I know how to play against it. This is why you analyze with a computer. So castle, c takes. Knight takes is actually better. But I think c takes makes more sense because it keeps this pawn structure going. Again, it wants h6 to stop the bishop getting in, but that's such a tough move to play. Knight c6, bishop h6, knight a5. And I'm correct, I thought it looked weird. I, I, I said it's a strange move. Rook ab1 is good. It prefers knight g5 straight away. Or does it? No, it does prefer rook ab1. They're kind of interchangeable by the looks of it. But I got the right idea. And my point was, if a move like a6 is played, then I can take, and the queen can't take because then b7 hangs. So if e takes, this looks dangerous. Right? Like, this pawn is also weak to moves like queen g4. And this is just a horrible position for black. So that was my idea, and that is why knight a5 is bad. So I'm happy I found that. Knight g5 takes, you could take with the bishop or the queen as I thought, b5. It actually wanted queen f3 first, setting up the idea that I found later on. But I think bishop f6, oh, actually prefers bishop f6. And after the rook moves, it doesn't mind that, but it wants me to take here first. If here, queen a3, what a move. Transferring the queen to the queen side. Looking at queen e7, looking here. I assume maybe like queen a6, rook b7. I'm guessing, yeah. Queen a6. Rook b7. Okay, and we're setting this up. I missed that. That's really nice. And if d takes, then d5. And yeah, you just want to get a rook on the d file. Again, transfer the queen to a3. That's really cool. That's really cool. The idea of freeing up the third rank for the queen to slide over. But okay, bishop g5 is fine. h6, taking is best. I just didn't believe black had counterplay here. Because, yeah, h4 just glues the bishop in place and the rook isn't doing anything. a5, bishop e2, force the rook back. Queen f3 it likes. And here, I was expecting if black sees my idea play a move like rook c8 and it's not obvious what I'm going to do. I'll probably put the bishop back on d3. Queen f6 is an idea. It isn't easy to actually break through this position. Now, because like, whilst the dark squares are very weak, black has a really nice light squared setup. Literally every single piece apart from the a5 pawn is on a light square. And if I ever take this knight, say I take it here, I lose a lot of my advantage because it's difficult for me to do much. Queen f6 really wants me to infiltrate. But say this, then I get the d-file. 
Okay, so maybe I just need to take the D file and pressure the B4 pawn. Which makes sense in retrospect. But yeah, B4 just, just hangs this idea, which I was very, very happy with. And yeah, even though I couldn't necessarily come up with the exact idea to break through the position, Black just didn't spot my idea. And bringing the queen to F3 is always going to be good because it kind of served, she kind of served her purpose on G3 by forcing this pawn forward and keeping an eye on the dark squares. Now the dark squares are secure, I can get the queen back into the game another way. And like the computer's idea of bringing the queen to A3 earlier, that is gorgeous, genuinely. But yeah, that's the game. And we're up to 1834 ELO without really any trouble. So yeah, if you've enjoyed the game, then thank you very much for watching. I actually got a comment on a recent video which asked me if I had like a Discord community, which if you guys are interested, please let me know in the comment section because if you want one, I will make one. Like, I don't mind chatting random stuff about chess to you guys if you want to do that. So if you watch till the end, then you're my guy. And you should let me know if that interests you. But with that said, I will end the video here. Go have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video.